This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated with another true crime story of insurance fraud. This one is more in line with the law than with the fictionalized stories of fraud. And it's number 38 called Don't Take the Fifth When Your Insurer Asks for an Examination Under Oath. The most effective tool an insurer has against fraud is the examination under oath. The right to compel an insured to appear for examination under oath has been part of the standard fire policy in every state in the United States that adopted the New York Standard Fire Insurance Policy. Almost everybody. The right was recognized by the United States Supreme Court in a case called Claflin v. Commonwealth Insurance Company that was decided in 1888 and has remained unchanged nor modified at all by the Supreme Court. When an insured is suspected of arson or some other variation of insurance fraud, the insurer will almost always require testimony at examination under oath. The insured often refuses to appear for examination under oath, a material condition of the policy, claiming the insurer's demand was a bad faith attempt to deprive him of his right against self-incrimination stated in the Fifth Amendment to the United States Constitution. In Grunberg v. Aetna Insurance Company, a 1973 decision of the California Supreme Court, it ruled that an insured had stated a cause of action for breach of the covenant of good faith and fair dealing. When the insurer denied the claim for refusal to testify at examination under oath, in fact, the insured agreed to testify as soon as the criminal proceeding against him was completed. The California Supreme Court, without making any factual determination, allowed the case to proceed to trial since the allegations, which included allegations that the insurer had fraudulently caused the insured to be arrested and his offer to testify when, shortly after the denial, the criminal charges were dropped, must be assumed to be true for the purposes of the decision of the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. Grunberg has been applied as if the California Supreme Court stated a hard and fast rule of law that if an insured was charged with a crime, the insurer could not examine him under oath until the criminal charges were resolved. This has resulted in delays as much as five years. The Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court was faced with the same question and reached a more reasonable result applying the contract language and the law that should be adopted in California. In the case called Mello et Ux versus Hingham Mutual Fire Insurance Company, a 1995 decision, followed later by Lorenzo Martinez versus Safety Insurance Company, a 2003 decision, the Massachusetts court held that the failure of an insured to appear at examination under oath, even while criminal charges of arson were pending, was no excuse, and his suit was barred. The reason for the decision was based on the fact that Hingham issued a policy to the plaintiffs effective September 4, 1992, and shortly thereafter, on September 25, 1992, a fire of undetermined origin broke out at the plaintiff's residence. Hingham was informed by the local authorities that the plaintiff was a suspect in a suspicious fire. Hingham, in accordance with the terms of its contract, demanded the examination under oath of its insured. He initially agreed to an examination, postponed it twice, and then refused to testify, asserting the plaintiff's constitutional privilege against self-incrimination. Hingham denied coverage for the fire, and the plaintiff sued. In reaching its decision, the court noted that it is the law in most jurisdictions that the submission to an examination, if the request is reasonable, is strictly construed as a condition preceding to the insurer's liability. 
the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court, finding the privilege did not apply to an examination under oath, stated, quote, where the undesirable consequences arise from the claimant's own voluntary actions, the privilege against self-incrimination cannot be used to extricate the claimant from such a dilemma of his own making. The plaintiff voluntarily entered into the contract with Hingham, another private party. Hingham obligated itself to perform duties, some of which were contingent on the plaintiff's actions. The plaintiffs made a claim against Hingham for coverage, and Hingham asked that the plaintiff keep his part of the bargain, even if it may harm his interest in the criminal investigation. A dilemma this may be, but it is not of Hingham's or the Commonwealth's making when an accused must choose between forfeiting the opportunity to speak in his own behalf and subjecting him to cross-examination. Thus, it is not by the Commonwealth or by Hingham that the plaintiff is compelled to furnish evidence against himself, but by his own contractual undertaking. Close quote. The Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court also refused to adopt the plaintiff's suggestion that both parties' rights could be protected by delaying the examination under oath until after the criminal proceedings are resolved. The court disposed of the argument succinctly, quote, quote, The insurer's contractual right is to determine promptly, while the evidence is still fresh, the validity of any loss for which it might become liable. The insurer is under a corresponding duty to pay any claim promptly. If these circumstances, the insurer should not have to delay its investigation for an indeterminate and possibly lengthy period to comport with the interests of the insured, close quote. Insureds in California have used the decision in Greenberg as a club against insurers, placing the investigation on hold for years while the insured fights against a criminal prosecution. The Fifth Amendment does not bar all testimony. It only requires that no person shall be compelled to accuse or furnish evidence against himself. When a person enters into a contract of insurance, he or she promises to appear and give testimony at examination under oath if the insurer requests it at a reasonable time and place. He promised to do so, and if he fails to keep the promise, he has breached a material condition of the policy. As the California Court of Appeal has stated in a, the leading case called Liberty Mutual versus Alt Village, a uh, 1977 decision, quote, the presence of this implied covenant of good faith as a part of all insurance contracts has been increasingly the source of spectacular jury awards based on a tort theory such as to enable the imposition of exemplary damages. We conclude, therefore, that the duty of good faith and fair dealing on the part of the defendant insurance companies is an absolute one. The non-performance by one party of its contractual duties cannot excuse a breach of the duty of good faith and fair dealing by the other party while the contract between them is still in effect and not rescinded. Faced with this sweeping and portentous pronouncement on the force and dignity of such covenants, we find no difficulty in construing the scope of their impact to devolve alike upon the insured as well as the insurer, and that a breach thereof by the insured would lead to the same legal consequence as any garden variety breach of contract. Thus it is here. Close quote. In Fremont Indemnity versus the Superior Court, a 1982 decision of the California Court of Appeals, it held, quote, Plaintiff here has brought a civil action claiming rights under a fire insurance policy. In so doing, 
he has placed in issue all factual matters relevant to any exclusion clause in that policy. To reiterate, as stated in a case called Wilson, the gravamen of his lawsuit is so inconsistent with the continued assertion of a privilege as to compel the conclusion that the privilege has in fact been waived. This is Wilson versus Superior Court. Based upon the foregoing, we hold that the plaintiff's filing of an action to recover on the fire insurance policy operated to waive his constitutional privilege against self-incrimination with reference to any factual issues, particularly as to the applicability of the arson exclusion tendered by the complaint. Even so, plaintiff finally may yet claim his privilege, but he will have to dismiss his lawsuit if he persists in doing so. As variously stated in the authorities we have relied upon, he cannot have his cake and eat it too, close quote. Most of the cases with regard to the examination under oath arise in the context of an insured who has filed suit for coverage under an insurance policy, but refused to comply with the insurer's request or requirement for an examination under oath. Most involve fire damage coverage and claims of arson for profit. The universal rule in that context is that the insured cannot use the Fifth Amendment on the one hand to avoid the contractual obligation to cooperate with the insurer and on the other hand compel the insurer to provide coverage. He can avoid the potential of self-incrimination by dismissing the lawsuit. The majority view is based on the understanding that the compulsion secured by the Constitution is a compulsion exercised by the state in its sovereign capacity in some manner known to the law. To bring a case within the constitutional immunity, it must appear that compulsion was sought under public process of some kind. It seems at least to me, that the pendulum is swinging. It is a time that insureds recognize and insurers enforce the rule of law that requires an insured to appear for examination under oath promptly when required to do so by the insurer as mandated by the standard fire insurance policy. If Grunberg stands for the proposition that insurers must wait until the insured is exonerated in his criminal proceedings, the California Supreme Court should revisit Grunberg and adopt the reasoning, reasoning of the Massachusetts Supreme Ju Judicial Court in Mello and the California Court of Appeals in Fremont and Altvillage to eliminate a long delay that would make defense of the insured suit beyond the ability to prove the defense of fraud. Insurers to avoid the problem raised by the California Supreme Court should never file in California a complaint for declaratory relief against its insured, but rather compel the insured to file suit since as a plaintiff he would be unable to assert the Fifth Amendment to prevent a deposition or trial testimony where he might incriminate himself in a case I handled, an insured had tried three times to burn down his building, only succeeding on the last try. His act of arson was so obvious that he was almost immediately arrested for the crime. When he was asked to appear for an examination under oath, the, point, the person, of course, asserted the Grunberg Doctrine, and asked that the examination under oath be delayed until he concluded his criminal charges. The insurer was compelled to do so, and five years after the demand for examination under oath, the insured pled guilty to one count of insurance fraud and went to jail. The claim was eventually denied, 
and he recovered nothing but the insurer was obligated to spend five years dealing with the claim and the crime and also required to pay the mortgagee under the standard mortgage clause a payment that they could never recover from it, their insured because he was incarcerated. This video was adapted from my book, Insurance Fraud, Volume 1, Second Edition, and my book, Insurance Fraud Costs Everyone. They are both available as Kindle books and as paperbacks from Amazon.com. Thank you for your attention.